yeah, yes. yes. And yeah. I, I'm happy that that point has come up because the important thing out, and we have been making this point since last February, the important thing out of the directives that have been issued is that the directives will soon fade in their impact if we do not tackle some other things. If mm -hmm. we do not tackle, if, if the Broadcasting Commission alone is being standard bearer, but on the buses you can continue to have the music um, in its most vulgar form, if in public spaces, in the bus parks where the children gather in their thousands, it is mm -hmm. all open to them. If they are allowed on computers at school to have the access to download certain material without any kind of filtering, it's going to be there to them. If parents don't do what they're supposed to do in monitoring their children, then if you regulate the broadcasters and we keep this side of it going, and then when you examine two years from now, you say, hold on, but our children are still at risk and you tighten the screw some more on the broadcasters, but all the other things are still happening, you will not have the positive effect. And we need to ensure, and you know, for, for Cecile and the other artists and so on, I have to say that when I have listened to some of the material, it's not just a matter of being free to say what you want. Some of the things I hear, I wonder why anybody has to be so vulgar in what it is that they are saying. Yeah. Not, it, there's Cecile, not Cecile, not you, <laughs> but I'm saying what to artists. Your friends. There <laughs> is, there's some of it that, let's say there's adult conversation and yes. there's adult discussion and so on, and I have no problem with that. But some of it, I have never heard in any other form in yes. any other country in the world the level of, yeah. of vulgarity yeah, the in the expression. Yeah. Yeah. And that we need to temper because there's too much of it. And filtering Generally. is going to be something that gets more difficult if what you are being bombarded with is so much of what you want to keep out. Well, re recently, I went to choreograph some children for an event that would have happened at the National Stadium. And while choreographing, the, 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 the person in charge of the music stopped that music and put on a, a daggering song. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just for the fun of it, jokingly. Yeah, and well, the, and I just saw the, this is children, you know, yeah. seven, eight, ten, eleven year old they children. They knew all the moves. They went to the floor and the boys yes. went on top of them. Yes. Immediately, whap, whap. <laughs> I was like, so, you know, a lot of the dancehall artists have, would like to defend the fact that, we should, you know, they can say what they want to do. But I don't think they would like to see their mother or their sister or their daughter, little five-year-old daughter, doing that, you know? So this is where I, I, I have reached now. I must know? say one thing that um, some very clever artists were being very lazy, I think. And mm -hmm. I don't know if, if it's the Broadcast Commission or whatever, but I think since the band, music has been More very creative. good and s some really creative Mm -hmm. writing has come i don't Wonderful. know if it's out of it i mean even kudos to mavada who ha was singing some really great songs <laughs> afterwards i don't know if that was the cause but so the commission has helped yeah has helped the artists themselves <laughs> we always had it in us i guess <laughs> so a little a little yes. stimulation um, yes, yes. um didn't didn't hurt yes we, we, we were never in any doubt that the jamaican artists yes. had the creativity to do better than what they were doing mm -hmm. i think they need the incentive to do so, meaning the disincentive of not having poor music being showcased in the media. And I think we took away that opportunity and gave them another opportunity to do better. Yeah. And we have seen the difference in the year that we have just passed. Mm -hmm. Improvements in the recording industry, in the kinds of music uh, which are being produced, uh, improvements in broadcasting uh, overall, the, the, these are the, the sentiments which are coming from, from our panelists as we discuss the uh, decision of the Broadcasting Commission a year ago to uh, regulate more seriously what is carried in uh, the broadcast media. Discussion continues after this break. No, 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 I'm waiting on my bed. So what I'm trying to what the guy can give me no better love. Welcome back to our special discussion looking at the directives given by the Broadcasting Commission last year, February, having to do with the uh, bleeping of certain words, the prohibition of images which show acts of violent sex, murder, and other uh, violent um, acts. Um, we are assessing the impact of these directives uh, one year um, onward, and also significantly during Reggae Month. I am Ian Boyne, and we have a new 
uh, set of panelists who are here to add their voices on this issue. We have Dr. Sonia Anayo, Cultural Studies Lecturer at the University of the West Indies. Good to, to have you. Uh, conscious artist, uh, uh, conscience, uh, a favorite of mine. The well-known, <laughs> I didn't say notorious, well-known executive director of the Broadcasting uh, Commission, Mr. Cordell Green, CD himself, and uh, Mr. Stephen Stewart, board member of the Jamaica Reggae Industry Association, uh, music producer um, also. In, interestingly, we have some young persons with us in the audience, uh, students uh, uh, from high schools as well as um, um, tertiary institutions, the University of the West Indies. I want to start with uh, Sophia Bryan, who is head girl at Meadowbrook High School. Uh, Sophia, good to have you. What do you think about this decision by the Broadcasting Com Commission to, as some would see it, you know, cramp people's freedom in what they can uh, hear on the radio and see on, on, on television. Do you think that's really necessary? Um, hello, everyone. I'm actually here in my capacity as the assistant vice president for the region one of the NSSC, National Secondary Students Council. And yes, I believe that the Broadcasting Commission should be lauded for taking up the mantle and actually doing what they have been mandated to do. I think that we need to protect the young minds that are so impressionable among us, for some of us haven't really shaped our concepts and our value system so much, and many of us at times look to external things rather than what is going on in our homes to get ideas as to how we shape our value system. So I do believe that it was something that was necessary. And I believe that dancehall artists initially that had said that, well, they were just picking on them because it's a frenzy and in the air and, okay, the Broadcasting Commission says we're gonna do something now and it's only for a time. I think that really, it wasn't just something that was being done by a conservative persons, conservative moral persons, right? And uh, I think that it was something that would, had needed to be done for a very, very long time. Good. Let's see uh, whether uh, university student Ibrahim uh, Conte, who is Cultural and Entertainment Affairs Chairman of the UWI uh, Guild, uh, known among other things for putting on some, you know, uh, the past hardcore um, sessions. Let us see whether uh, your, your views are hard to see, Ibrahim. Um, well, I must agree with Sophia um, in terms of what she's saying. But really, one of the comments which a number of um, students said to me, and I myself wondered myself, I mean, if it wasn't for the Esther Tyson article, <laughs> would it really uh, be such a great issue, or would the Broadcasting Commission, you know? Um, run with it, so to speak. Yeah. But really, um, I really do think it's something that was needed. Um, you can notice the change in terms of the creativity of the lyrics in a number of the artists. I mean, the top two artists, Movado, Movado and Vibes Cartel, for example. So really, it was something that was needed. I saw the changes um, in terms of some of the popular radio station um, that young persons would listen to. Um, for the first couple months, so to speak. It wasn't that heavily based in terms of new dancehall, but really the DJs were forced to be creative as well. Um, after a while, it became more relaxed and went back to all. In, in terms of not playing loose lyrics or playing songs that shouldn't be on radio, but really more heavily based on dancehall. But the edited version of the songs is much different compared to the raw version that you'll hear at a party and at, at, at dancehall sessions. But as Cecile had said earlier, you find that the artists nowadays, they're a lot more creative. Oh. And even one, uh, if I don't mean to single him out, who a member of your panelist, um, Conscience, yeah, man. a lot yeah. of his songs, I mean, from the onset, but a lot Besides. more of his songs in 09, you know, is really creative songs, songs that are playing words. I mean, you get what he's saying, but it's not as straightforward and as raw as it was before the February 09 stance from the Broadcasting Commission. 